Hi, I am Siddhartha Dash, a Sid Dash from Chartist Research. And I'm here with today with Sunil Biswas, Chief Product Officer from Iron Commodities. And we're going to discuss a little bit about what is happening in the commodity markets. As you know, it's it's been a period of extreme volatility and great, strong evolution in the commodity markets. And this face numerous different forces. We'll discuss these issues with Sunil. So Sunil, what, given all of this change, what does ION see as the key challenges in the commodities markets? If you will? I said, well, thanks for uh, uh, hosting me today. Happy to be here. So um, maybe if I take a step back and sort of like look at some of the uh, structural changes that we see impacting commodities. You know, so climate change results in decarbonization that drives energy transition. Net result, um, you know, we see a large push into uh, renewable power and fuels. Uh, the geopolitics of the world for the last, you know, four or five years, you know, we've seen sanctions, we've seen tariffs, we've seen OPEC plus uh, production rises, production cuts, some further cuts more recently. You know, and this has given rise, together with the Ukraine war situation, a, a rebalancing of the, the global supply chain um, and knock on consequences to infrastructure within the, the commodities industry. You know, so collectively, these structural changes um, have uh, given rise to increased potential for supply chain change disruptions. And those disruptions result in new arbitrage opportunities. They also result in increased market volatility. And ultimately, from my perspective as a solution provider, uh, they give rise to the need for better and improved uh, trading and risk management systems. So, you know, from my seat, when I look out at our customer base of around 1,200 that are sitting on, uh, many of them are sitting on one of our um, ION ETRM solutions, an open link, right angle, Allegro, triple point, or aspect. Um, irrespective of who we talk to, whether they're in crude and refined products, power gas renewables, metals mining, agricultural consumer packaged goods, we hear the same thematic challenges every time. Uh, please give me better risk management to uh, navigate through market stresses. Please give me uh, better tools to analyze uh, data so that my front office is armed with better decision uh, support tools. And, uh, you know, a uh, constant theme that is never goes away, give me more and more automation to reduce manual processes so I can get uh, people focused on the higher value work and, and drive operational efficiencies uh, through my firm. So these are the, these are the main challenges that, that we see at a, at a thematic level. Thank you. That, that's, that's really interesting. And, and those are broad structural themes. Let's take some of them one by one, if you will. So, you know, it, it's interesting you mentioned the uh, transition to net zero and the whole decarbonization effort. How are you responding to the transformation and restructuring in power markets? Yeah, well, power and electricity markets, particularly in the US and in Europe, have seen market structure change now over several years. You know, ION's focus, uh, which we've done in partnership with many of our customers, um, has, let's say in the last two years, really focused on renewable power and intraday trading. So we would sort of like break down renewable power. Of course, we started off by supporting assets such as wind and, and solar, and then we brought in uh, battery storage capability and some optimization uh, technology there. Um, the market very much moved to uh, revolve around uh, power purchase agreements. And uh, what we've done in the last year or so is built the full end-to-end -end life cycle for support of PPA. So that's modeling and pricing of these structured uh, contracts, the automated booking into the ETRM once executed, uh, volume management and risk management during the life cycle of the deal, and then obviously dealing with payouts and, and settlements uh, to account for the differences between the, the forecast and the actuals. You know, having made the investments in PPAs, you've then got the associated problem of dealing with um, the certificate management and trading, right? So whether it's uh, RECs in the US or goes in, in Europe, 
you know, you've got the the issues to deal with both on the buy side and the, the sell side um, in renewable power. So that's sort of like one area of focus. And the other, as I said, was in intraday trading. So again, you know, we've seen a granularity come down, you know, to one hour, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, and some jurisdictions even down to five minute power. So this has implications on your forecasts and building your forecasts out um, over the time horizon. But then also the, the knock-on consequences of scheduling uh, at that so granular increment onto the ISOs or TSOs in Europe. Um, and then obviously uh, the settlement process afterwards uh, to to figure out exactly what happened in, in the market. So that's one area of, of intraday trading. The other is, of course, uh, the rise of uh, algorithms. So increasingly in Europe, uh, we see uh, algorithms really driven because of the renewable power generation, the unpredictability of, of, uh, of that generation. Um, algorithms really come into play uh, to support, you know, real-time decision making and balancing and optimization uh, in those markets. And uh, with algorithms, you get much smaller trades executed much more frequently. Um, you know, having a, an audit trail of those individual transactions is important, and, and that's a, another area of what we've been doing really in the uh, in the power and electricity space. Uh, so ch changing course a little bit, I mean, uh, 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 I mean, if you think about uh, other areas of energy, logistics has been a very central element in some segments, such as the refinery products, etc. And uh, what is Ion's strategy in that area? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's a, a great question. You know, we, you know, the, the core of this business started off in in hydrocarbons. You know, when we think about our solutions um, from an ETRM perspective, they're really four pillars, you know, trading, risk management, the, the accounting side, and of course, the physical operations that covers uh, logistics management and so movement storage and processing of the physical commodities. Um, in the last year or two, a lot of our focus has really been around uh, gas. So we've done a lot of work in uh, gas scheduling, uh, building connectivity to third-party nomination systems, uh, really to create a, a much more usable solution so that the, the end scheduler who wants to route gas can see that. They can also see you know, the nominations that they put into to the solution. Um, and then also see what actually got delivered and bring that all, all in in one place. So we, we've been partnering with uh, with third parties uh, to build uh, EDI connectivity onto the US pipeline network. And once you do that and you start to pull all that data in, you can start to go to the next level. And we've built AI-based uh, predictive pathing uh, algorithms to help with, uh, with gas scheduling. So on the, on the other side of the the table for gas, um, you know, we we've always had gas storage, um, but we've taken it to the next level with gas storage optimization. So, you know, here we're looking at optimal injection and withdrawal to maximize PL given um, you know a firm's contractual deliveries. Maybe to switch focus and talk about a, a few other things, um, you know, LNG and uh, and hydrogen. Um, you know, uh, very, very topical. Obviously, LNG last winter, um, you know, we had to deal with uh, deliveries into Europe. Hopefully, we'll be a, a little bit more um, organized this year uh, as the, the European winter approaches. But, um, you know, based on what we've learned on, on how to deal with LNG sort of like end to end, you know, including the liquefaction and regasification process, we're now starting to apply that that mindset to uh, ammonia and hydrogen, right? Uh, so we're making similar investments, you know, across the supply chain, uh, modeling uh, hydrogen that way, uh, including sort of like uh, vessel transportation. Uh, final thing that I haven't touched on, which is is quite topical at the moment, is biofuels. Uh, so, you know, you think of ethanol blending and the related certificates and sustainability credits, and you couple that with the logistics and, oper uh, and operations that goes along with uh, biofuels management. Having all that capability in a single solution obviously brings uh, tremendous benefits to, to our customers. 
So a lot of what we've been doing here in, in logistics is improving the usability and the experience for the physical scheduler. So while, while we touched upon the themes of physical scheduling and physical management, even the paper side, there's an increasing focus on the operations of the trading business, if you will. I uh, wanted to understand a little bit about Ion's strategy around, you know, the the physical, the operational processes such as settlement and managing the sort of trade life cycle, if you will. Um, yeah, so going back to, uh, you know, those four pillars that I talked about, one of them I mentioned was accounting. So this is sort of like the inventory management and the, and the back office processing. Um, you know, at Ion, you know, we passionately believe in automation. And one of the areas that we feel that is ripe for automation is actually the back office. Um, so we spent some time looking at um, uh, electronic confirmation matching and electronic settlement matching. So I think confirmation, most people can clearly understand the benefits. You know, you want to ad- identify a confirm break very early on upstream in the process so you can get uh, immediate rectification. Uh, settlements is is a little bit more interesting though, and actually has broader benefits, right? So if you can start to automate your your settlements, then you can start to do interesting things such as you know counterparty level netting. You can start to see your netting statements more in real time, and as the month progresses, uh, see that build up. Uh, that will then allow you to sort of like back into uh, potential optimization of payment. Um, and once you do that, then the, the credit management angle can be approved. And ultimately, this should lead to benefits from a trade financing perspective. So you can start to see the chain of evolution, how something that was a back office process could start to actually have a real financial difference to, to operating a, a commodities business. And, uh, you know, we, we like this area. And uh, as you well know, you know, Ion is a, is a larger enterprise and we have uh, treasury management software as well. We start to think about, you know, how can we bring some of those capabilities that we have in treasury to provide, you know, deeper business insights into cash flow analysis and, and trade financing as well. Uh, so that's, some, that's an area we're watching, maybe something for when we sit down next year and, uh, and talk about what's happening in the market. So finally, uh, we've covered a lot of territory, but finally, to close, what would you think are your top three roadmap roadmap elements going forward? Uh, it's a great question, Sid. I mean, as you know, we've got a, a large product portfolio, so just picking out three is is a little bit challenging. Um, but maybe if I, I think of thematic areas and um, you know that align to industry trends and customer needs, I mean. First area of focus, um, energy transition. You know, I talked about PPAs and uh, some of the renewable fuels. What I didn't talk about was carbon trading. I mean, that's very much come to the the forefront. Uh, We actually released a new product this year called Carbon Zero that really allows, um, uh, I guess, the financial firm to to take exposure to credits uh, and allowances in the the carbon trading market. Um, Our solutions like comes pre-configured with a, a, a credits uh, database so you can get going straight away uh, in that area. Um, uh, a second area of focus, obviously, uh, improved usability through automation. So you heard about what we were doing in gas scheduling and uh, electronic settlements. Uh, but another area of focus is um, uh, looking at market price uh, providers. Um, there's been a lot of change in, in price discovery recently and uh, uh, a better integration uh, between us and some of those market data price providers is is on the cards uh, heading into next year. Uh, and the final area is we always do risk management. So you heard about FEA, but uh, you know deteriorating credit environment is still out there. So credit risk and things like potential future exposure uh, are very much the focus right now as well as what we call a streaming risk service, which is taking a lot of the, the the exposures and the risk numbers that we produce and putting that into a framework where we can distribute that across the customer's enterprise so that they can nourish downstream applications to do things like limits management, for example. So those are just some 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 key highlight areas of, uh, of what we're focused on uh, heading into 2024. Thank you, Sunil. That was informative as usual. 
And that hope that brings our session to a close. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sid. And again, thank you to Travis for recognizing ION in the Energy 50 survey. Um, you know, it's an honor to, to get the recognition uh, for, for what we do, um, both around innovation, automation, and digitization uh, for the broader industry. So thanks.